Hi folks, this is Tony Tucker saying hello and I'm here with my darling Prussia who's been my ride or die running with me. We spent the night at my cousin's house Sunday night and then I made some runs. Um, anyway, I got a story I want to share with you when I'm having this informal mukbang. I didn't bring my tray, but I've got some of these um, Taco Bell french fries as I like. <laughs> oh, here's an onion ring that came out though. So, enjoy the onion ring, if you can see it. I don't see my... There it is. From Burger King. So, it's a mukbang. And I got the zesty sauce. And... Mmm. Crunchy and hot. There you get Is that... Um... And... They were fried, and they were absolutely frozen. Tasting. They were cold. I hate cold french fries. Who likes cold french fries? If you like cold french fries, drop a like or a comment below and tell me I love cold french fries when I go to fast food restaurants. Yeah, right. Especially if you could use cold french fries. Who likes cold french fries? Nobody, right? So they gave me a, another one. And these are Taco Bell's cheesy fries. Mm. They're okay. I'm kind of lukewarm. This has been giving me a minute to drive and just sizzle it. At least the cheese. So precious is trying to eat. He didn't eat this season food. And I had been laying off of it. I had lost about eight pounds. I probably put on about four of them. I purchased some dresses. And some of them were too big, some just right, and some too small, just like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And some of the dresses I purchased about a year ago, I was able to get into because I lost about 8 to 10 pounds. And probably gained, like I said, half of it back. I was eating spinach salads and healthy food. And I just decided to tell you the story about R. Kelly, remember? R. Kelly, famously known for bump and grind and I Believe I Can Fly. Which I'm going to zone in on and focus on that song. I was there when he was inspired for that song at my church in Chicago. Um, Crusaders, where John Eckhart is the pastor. I haven't been there in years, but that's where I learned a lot about deliverance and territorial kingdoms, biblically based. Poor thing got kind of crazy with some theology, but anyway, I was at Kenwood High School, and that's where they held services most Sundays before they moved to 79th Street at this big theater. Anyway, um, I'm still going to do those anyway t-shirts. I was sitting in church and I was scanning the area and something in me knew somebody was there and I looked and it was packed at Kenwood School and there was R. Kelly and he noticed me notice him. And somebody may have told him, yeah, that girl over there, Tony Tucker has her own talk show on CBS in Chicago. On WBBM TV, Different Drummers, which is an audience, was an audience participatory show that I hosted for about 17 years or so. And my church would come, youth groups of black, white, mix, Asian, Hispanic, whatever, you name it, everybody was welcome in the audience as we talked about relevant, salient uh, issues regarding young adults and popular. Um, the, within the popular context of what's popular in TV. I was distracted a little bit. But anyway, um, and there was R. Kelly. And it was a Sunday when it was one of those things where it was a prophetic word and a lot of prophetic singing. And Pastor John Eckhart was singing, I believe I can fly. And this was way before the song was written and came out. And R. Kelly was there. People were ministering. And we were just talking about flying in the spirit. And I know it sounds a little lulu to some of you all if you don't know about the prophetic word and just singing prophetically like the psalmist David. It was a great psalmist. And um, he was just singing, flying and, and reaching the sky and reach and, and doing the thing God's want, God wants us to do, what the Holy Spirit wants us to do and being led by the Holy Spirit. So I remember that profoundly and I'm sure the audio visual, video people, excuse me, if they're still around, um, they may have that documented uh, some years ago. I believe I can fly and touch the sky and sail 
and and that in heavenly places and that was the song and R. Kelly was there and I remember that was the impetus in the beginning the embryonic stage for the song that hit globally I believe I can fly and some people I was at a hairdresser once and she told me a beautician she thought it was about being high and I said no I was there and that's back in the day when R. Kelly was saying that he came to the Lord and we were a deliverance church and they still are in crusaders I believe although I haven't been there for years now but um and since long I'm in Chicago in Florida not in Chicago that was back in Chicago when I'm at CCWC Calvary Chapel Worship Center in Newport Ritchie Florida for the large part where Bill Strayer is my pastor, the senior pastor. So anyway, um, he was, he, I believe he was encouraged and inspired to write that song, which has touched millions and millions upon millions, if not billions of people. And poor R. Kelly, yeah, I lived in Olympia Fields, Illinois. He moved there and he bought a former rich person's house, tore it down and built it up. And, um, you know, everyone was proud. They would drive around, and on the fence, he had arcade. Like, if you went up north, you would see um, my Dicka's house, if you knew where it was, or Michael Jordan, more importantly, with the MJ. So it was similar to that once R. Kelly redid his home and all the property. And I used to sit next to him and his girlfriend, and then the, she became his fiance, and she had a ring. When they got wow, engaged, excuse me, and I said, oh, what a beautiful diamond. ring. And she was like, mm, thank you. You know, the girl that was on Housewives, um, Beverly Hills Housewives or something like that, whatever. She was a dancer and she was seemingly real meek and quiet. And um, one thing that's funny is that before they got engaged, I was going to ask him to be on my talk show since he was a member and coming regularly or my radio show. I used to be a host at WVOM 1450 AM for years, too, back in the day and BET News. And with different drummers on CBS, the talk show I hosted and produced with that was an audience participatory young adult type thing, just like an Oprah Donahue thing again. Uh, I wanted him to come in and I was advised by someone who was a minister at my church, not Pastor John, a different minister, that he wasn't ready. That is R. Kelly. And I didn't know anything about the backdrop of the girls and the, um, you know, dealing with teenage girls and all that. I knew nothing about it. No one really knew it. Hit the fan much later. So... Um, God still used him. God can still use him. And I was thinking about him being in prison and people, you know, may love him, but I'm loving him as a Christian and doing his lonely, dark hours, praying that the Holy Spirit would visit him and angels would comfort him. And if he's repented, that he would be totally repentant, repentant and ask the Lord to be there to comfort him. And he will. He is a person and that he would just still inspire him to inspire others there in a positive Christian way with anointing, with breakthrough anointing and with authority and power despite whatever darkness happens in those dark places. God bless R. Kelly and his family and help him and forgive him, Lord. And I pray that that is in his heart and the girls who that were, that accused him and all that went on, just like you did Bill Cosby, you got him out, Lord. And a lot of that was probably true and a lot not true because it was funny with Bill Cosby, that is, that these women came out with that emotion and all of that. And so I heard that he was trying to buy CBS or something, and that was a ploy part of it to bring him down because it was always rumored that he would drug women or had allegedly drugged women. But now he's out in his mid-80s or later, older but I asked the Lord to comfort Bill, and I'm asking the Lord to comfort R. Kelly and be with him and his children and his family and still use him because he touched many millions of people. And the reason he hit my spirit is because I was asleep and I was listening to uh, American Idol from 2022, the current year. And it went on and I fell asleep and you know how they go back to all types of videos will play and play and play. And this girl who was with X Factor, I believe, overseas across the pond was singing, I Believe I Can Fly. And she was a beautiful blonde girl, beautiful voice. And I woke up and I just started crying and thinking about R. Kelly and how he touched people and how so many people performed that song, performed it wonderfully. And there was anointing on it. So God bless him musically and you know satan 
They say he was, according to the Bible, the music leader. <laughs> and he knew how to um, charm. And God even gave Lucifer that beautiful coat and gave him honor. And he would be able to enter into heaven and enter into God's presence. So that's something isn't it? But he's going to be bound and destroyed and all this evil is going to go away eventually once Jesus rules during the millennial again here on planet Earth from Israel. But just pray for R. Kelly. Don't scoff at me or scoff at him or anyone else because you point the finger. There's another one with my cheese sauce in my hand coming back and my food's cold now. But I just wanted to lift him up and Ask the Lord to cover him and comfort him. And as he ministers to others in jail and abroad, that you would touch him and forgive him. Because your blood, you said, I'll wash your white in the snow. You said that uh, come unto me as you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how dirty you are, how dirty you've been, no matter what you succumb to that's of this world, that greater is he that's in me, you that's in me, or greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world which is Jesus when you expect him. At the name of Jesus, chains are broken, things are broken, and God can deliver you. And he can certainly touch our Kelly and, and jail and prison walls and all those other people too, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for a good day. And I just wanted to say like, subscribe, comment, uh, get the algorithm going. I need some more subscribers. I really do need you to be encouraged to continue to do this YouTube thing. I need uh, comments down there. Even if you don't like what I prayed about and said, God is a forgiver of all sins. And he loves us all. That's why he died. He died to forgive us. His blood was shed on Calvary because there was no more oxen and cows and birds that had to be turtle doves and all that before the temple. Jesus was the one and only sacrifice when his blood was shed on Calvary. He knew he was going to die, but he rose again and he has all power. That's the victory in talking about Jesus and the blood of Jesus and the resurrected Savior and he's coming back to rule on this planet and I advise you to reconsider if you turned away from him and if you mock others who've been in church because you've been hurt. It's not others. It's Bible. God loves you. He died. He rose again. He's coming back again. Be ready. Lift up our Kelly and many others in the name of Jesus so you won't get slapped across the face like Will slapped Chris anyway that's another story <laughs> we'll pray up for Will Smith and Chris Rock they really need you yes they do and Jada and their family and their children we lift them up too in the name of Jesus only in the name of Jesus and Denzel Washington and Tyler Perry, I don't know why his name just cost my mind, and Oprah, and I've met her many times back when I was a talk show host in Chicago, and um, never made that kind of money, I didn't even make a decent salary, I was thinking about the woman who had hired me through the broadcast ministries, bragged about me making $12 an hour, hosting and producing that show, and taking it to heights beyond, but God gave me the grace and the victory, I thought I'd move up and, and do much better. But that's okay. God opens the door for Tony. Yes, he will. Yes, he does. <laughs> and it's time. He's he's the provider, Jehovah Rapha. And I don't want to be bitter or anything like that. And I know that he still has lots, lots more in store. And I'm just praying that this YouTube, and I declare, channel will take off and get rotation and get within the algorithm. People will like and comment and join and share this video in Jesus' name. I know it will happen. Amen. You know why, before I end this, I remember there was a program director at CBS at one time. They would come and go, but this young lady, I can't even think of her name. She was older than me. She called me in the office, and I worked through the Broadcast Ministries of Greater Chicago, formerly the Church Federation. There was a scandal, and they changed the name legally and all that. You know, there's always a scandal. Back in Chicago, in the diocesis, uh, Olivia Talbot was the executive director, and I worked with Eric Deacons, who was my colleague as well. But that's another story, because I was wondering why he made more money than me, and I was the one on TV and, and brought in all those people and did that thing. But um, God bless them all. Uh, hosting that show and producing that show and I'm sure some of you have seen this if you ever saw different drummers when I was there as a host and you wonder what happened drop me a line I'll tell you what happened but God bless them and um, the blessings are coming forward I know they are and that's why I worked and did um, ET 
is a reporter and covered those stories in uh, WVON. That's why I mentioned it. But my point was that hosting that show was a, a big notion. There were a lot of jealous people. I'm glad social media wasn't like it was. Because when I got away from it, I ran into a girl and she, she was like, I seen, I've seen you somewhere, young African-American girl back then. And I said, oh, yeah, I used to host a show for years on CBS, different drummers channel, two in Chicago, Illinois, blah, blah. And it was seen in other cities and even in Cancun, <laughs> I found out. But um, she said, yeah, I told my boyfriend to turn it off. And she said this in my face, because you're trying to be like Oprah. And I was like, well, I lived and grew up in Chicago. I wasn't trying to be like anyone. I knew a Phil Donahue before Oprah. Oprah happened to come and host AM Chicago and turned it around and she took off. But that was all set up. And she believes in many ways to God. I believe in one way to God based on the Bible, which I believe is the Holy Spirit, the one true word of God. Although I've met Oprah and no Oprah and Stedman and all of that. My ex, ex, ex fiance from 100,000, like 38 years or nine years. I used to hang out with Stedman, um, Dave Mitchell and Oprah and go to uh, Henry So's and Effie So's Bible study that was back in the day in Chicago. And um, anyway, I think he talked me out of her grace and favor. <laughs> hey, you can hit me up though, Oprah. I always needed your help, but I never asked you. And I went on your show a couple of times and I apologize if I set you, upset you when we talked about black English and I mentioned how articulate you were and are and you wouldn't be on TV and that I had my own show. I wasn't trying to promote drummers in that way. I was just trying to get a point across that uh, articulation and subject verb agreement. I believe that we were talking about black English before the ebonics that word came out. Um, whatever black English was, you know, the him, y'all, be, y'all, be, we, be, uh, slavery talk, you know, because we couldn't read if you would talk, if you read, you were flogged or lunch. And so there's so much against the African American community, but a lot of people know how to articulate and use subject verb agreement. That's beyond that. But, uh, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. I wasn't trying to just plug myself, but you know, when I went on your show way back then, because that show never re-aired, I noticed. <laughs> I'm so sorry, darling. I love you. Jesus loves you. Thank you for being an inspiration for the good things you've done. But Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. And I love you very much. And you were an inspiration. But I did what God wanted me to do in my hometown, the shy town Chicago, before I even knew you would host that show. That was a part of something. And I, as I shared with you when I first met you, that I had been inspired to do long before I really took over and started hosting different drummers on CBS. But I wrapped my arms around you in prayer and love. And I said, the Holy Spirit, keep you healthy and happy and blessed. God bless you all. Love you. Take care. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Ciao for now.